we have a very interesting panel here, and the diversity of verticals getting represented on this uh, dais is amazing. So I think I'll quickly give an intro to this uh, panel. Uh, with the increasing demand for consumers' attention, brand needs to enhance their consumer journeys as they have a plethora of options to choose from. Creating and deploying fresh content regularly is the key to keeping your audience engaged. Today, uncertainty and volatility have been the most used terms in terms of business arena over the last few years due to the pandemic. For this, a number of brands are adapting the agile approach to marketing to keep pace with constantly changing consumer sentiment. Agile marketing is believed to be, is believed to leverage and help brands lead the next wave of growth for the business of future. I got this, by the way, so it's quite nice. Uh, I'll move on to the question, and I think I'll pose a very generic question to all, which is, the world has gone through a drastic change. I firmly believe so in the last few years. I think most of us as marketers are always going to be in the era of pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. And predominantly, I think the outlook towards marketing or business in general itself has changed a lot, right? Uh, as the topic suggests, building agile, building a playbook for agile brands has taken a newer meaning in lieu of consumer shifts, in terms of marketing outlook, business outcomes, or marketers' pur purview as well. What are your thoughts on this topic in lieu of today's uh, dynamics specific to your brand? And we can go sequentially, starting with you, Anuj. So from my, <clears throat> from my interpretation of agility, is that consumer expectations have changed quite a lot last few years, especially post-COVID. And people are not looking for a functional solution. People are looking a lot more from you as a brand. And what can prepare a brand for future in terms of agility is the importance of purpose, importance of going back to the roots and staying relevant. Uh, it's not just about a typical 30 second or in 360 degree campaign. There's plethora of brands, there's a hajar new D2C brands which have opened up and a lot more are going to come. It's democratized the way digital is done for the uh, go to market for the consumers. And each D2C brand or smaller niche brand has found their cohort of consumer who's relevant to them and they're talking about purpose. And now the onus is on the traditional brands to keep up, not just talk about typical functional benefit of the brand, but what are you going to do to stay relevant for the new age of consumers? What are we going to live and not just talk about in terms of purpose? And that is what's going to keep you relevant for future generation and multiple cohorts of consumers rather than just pure, simple, pure play, the way it used to happen earlier. I think from that lens, would you define Symphony as a traditional brand or a modern brand? I think we're in transition, to be very Fantastic. frank. We are a legacy brand uh, who's been there for 35 years in the industry. We are the one who launched the whole branded coolers category. And fortunately for us, we are in the business of green cooling, right? Look at the temperature, look at the global warming. It was raining a few days back in Bombay, right? I spent 16 years, never heard rains in March, and it's just hot in Feb. What does it show? The world is changing. And we all, as community, as brands, need to start doing something to contribute for the better good, to leave something better for the future. So Symphony, as a brand, what we are doing is, one, we're in the business of green cooling, which helps us to talk about it. Second is, uh, in terms of what we are doing, so we just recently changed our brand tagline from refreshing lives to thinking of tomorrow. We're saying Kalki Soch, right? Because we all need to do something right now for a better future for the generations. Symphony, as a brand, is doing something on its part. and. We are working with MSMEs, we are working with consumers to create that kind of awareness for future. So, yeah, it's a transition and I think it's a good transition to have. We recognize the need to change and adapt ourselves to the new future and the journey has just started. That's great. I think really, I think that's a great start to this uh, panel as well, agile marketing. You're thinking about tomorrow, you're changing your taglines, you're changing your brand pers persona to be matching. So great. We move on to Deepak. How does the ad tech ecosystem look at this from your perspective? No, I think, uh, 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 you know, firstly, uh, uh, it's exciting to, you know, really talk about my category, especially when you're surrounded in a room where people are only interested in hearing about a B2C business. <laughs> okay. So largely, I think from a, uh, from a point where we come, we are in the space where we deal with marketing technologies, um, our, whether we call it MarTech or we call it AdTech. And as a business, what we do is, uh, we are building a business where we are basically saying that, listen, you know what, how do we democratize intelligence? How do we help enterprise go ahead and leverage that? 
Uh, so we are dealing with a sensitive topic like data. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, from our perspective, being agile or constantly evolving, okay, is something which is considered very essential. You know, because in in the nature of what we do, and we cater to uh, stakeholders. You know, we cater to CMOs, we cater to publishers, we cater to digital marketing managers. Yeah, and as a business, you know, you are competing with global brands. You're competing with global technologies. And in the process, you're also trying to say that, listen, here is a differentiated technology, uh, and this is how this differentiated technology will resonate with you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, whilst we are doing massive amount of innovation and, and that gets great adoption, but I would like to also make a point out here, I think the point on agility. Uh, one part of it is that, okay, as, as product creators, as technology creators, you know, we are building some agile solutions, efficient solutions, so on and so forth. And very interestingly, when we look at the other side, when we talk to the marketing teams or when we talk to marketing organizations, um, sometimes, um, and pardon me for, for, you know, pardon me to say this, whilst I've seen marketers speak about being agile from the consumer perspective, okay, I would say that when it comes to adopting marketing technologies, when it comes to dealing with that change management, Okay, because it's, it's finally human behavior, you know, uh, and they struggle to be agile. Themselves or their departments struggle to be agile, and it's not easy. I want to make that a point. You know, it's not easy because, you know, you have to take some decisions, you have to take some shifts, you have to take some risks in the process to, uh, to really appreciate that. So I believe that, you know, uh, uh, it's one thing where we want things to be agile, Okay, and get better. And it's another thing when the onus falls on our mindset to be agile. You know, uh, so so that to me is something which uh, uh, is really been an interesting thing. And we've seen all kinds of cohorts of people who are very agile in their mindset and people who are who are eager to be agile. I would say so. A great point, I think, Deepak. I think sometimes within ad tech, we have seen that. Uh, while you have been very stiff about how you look at marketing, there will always be a disruptor which will be around the corner, which will force you to change the way we think. I mean, today, if you look at global, TikTok has one of those examples which has come in the last four years and completely changed the way people have been spending on their marketing budgets. They have introduced products, they have forced marketers hand to really look at uh, how their media planning is. And obviously, uh, they are banned in India, but I'm sure uh, there are other great ad tech ecosystems which will keep pushing the barrier. Kavita. How is the weather on agile marketing down south? And what are you guys doing? You do a lot of interesting initiatives. Tell us more your thoughts on this. First, I'd like to add on to what Deepak said. I think it's absolutely right. It's more about a mindset. I would also say it's to do with the bandwidth, you know, the marketing team's bandwidth. A lot of times it's on the agenda, but sometimes it doesn't happen because the bandwidths are squeezed. Uh, but just to take a step back, like one of my ex-bosses who is seated here in the audience always says, you know, for marketers, I think our lives were far more agile than the rest of the functions all through. Because one of the things we always say is uh, the reason, I'm sure most marketing heads would agree, the reason why we all love our jobs is because no two days are the same. You know, every day there's a new challenge and sometimes the urgent takes over the important. All of that happens and we've learned to live with it. So. I would say on a relative scale, we've always been a bit more agile than other functions. I'm sure everyone agrees. Uh, but that apart, I think post-pandemic, things have really changed a lot. To quote one of my mentors, uh, it's no longer about 360 degrees uh, campaigns. It's more about 365 days of marketing. And we feel the pinch more so in low involvement categories like tires. So it's not really something about down south, I think it's a national phenomenon. Today, you need to have a, you know, so it's not like you don't have a playbook anymore. Of course you have a playbook. The playbook kind of gives you, gives you the guardrails and the frameworks within which your brand needs to operate. But I guess it's about developing those templates, developing those, uh, you know, kind of uh, frameworks within which your brand communication will operate. Building a content calendar, all this I'm speaking in the space of agility in brand communication. And of course, you know, feeding in those uh, moments where you want to market for fun. So all of that has to happen. That is agility in brand communication. 
but that part i think companies across the country are also trying to implement an agile way of working which means it's no longer about just the large projects which run into 6 months or 9 months it's also about breaking them down into smaller milestones it's about sprint meetings uh, not having like a rigid project framework so i think that agility we all are experiencing in our lives and in our brands no i think i completely agree i think um, i've spent a fair amount of time on the marketing side no two days are the same but i think me and deepak would propagate the come on the ad tech side and i think the no one day is also the same there's so much happening here so uh, uh, i mean vijay what are your thoughts i think you're a part of this mammoth uh, brand which is a cult i mean obviously png with its diversity is across so many categories um and there is obviously a mindset it's a market leader positioning that you always maintain in most of your markets how does agile marketing or a playbook for agile marketing or thoughts towards agile marketing playbooks uh, get discussed within png sure thanks thanks for the question nikhil so um, see at uh, png let, let me start with what constitutes a playbook the way we look at it right <clears throat> so in a playbook there are some elements which are definite and fixed that you want to maintain and continue as they are which are for example your brand purpose which are like your brand equity and the character or the tone of voice of your brand then there are there there are some elements which are like a variable components where the agility comes in which is like the key communication messages that you need to evolve based on the latest insights and the market trends that you uh, get from the market and uh, you know the kind of optimization that you do uh, within your media mix modeling or uh, you know the different touch points that you go and meet these consumers right so that is how i'd say that uh, from our lens that we look at uh, at png health you know i'll just give you a simple example uh, we do have a plethora of brands uh, mostly into the health supplements right vitamins and mineral supplements so pre pandemic era we used to go via the healthcare professionals where a certain doctor has to prescribe uh, you know your product and then only you know the sale happens right but during the pandemic what we saw is because of the evolving involvement of the consumers more and more into the health sector there is this habit that got created that consumers are now looking for more and more information online and have become a direct uh, you know they are directly going into the health supplements so that is something that uh, we looked at as a market trend while we kept our brand purpose on driving the awareness of and improving and touching and improving the health of everybody at the core we went direct to consumer as one of the change in strategies so that is how i would look at uh, in terms of bringing the agility as you build the brands like i said stay something that is core to your brand but at the same time evolve based on the marketing trends and the latest learnings thanks vijay rat auto car how does that define the playbook hi nikhil thanks thanks for the panel yeah so um, i mean agree to some of the panelists here um, uh, a lot of the stuff that has happened in the last 3 years has actually taught not only marketers but sales folks and finance folks a lot of new things uh i while the agile uh, marketer playbook uh, what i found i think it itself wasn't agile enough to be very frank you know it says that the agile marketer playbook starts from an idea and let me tell you the last 3 years a lot of the work a lot of us have done did not start with an idea it started with a situation so uh, the agility itself has been transformed and i'll give you two contexts of agility which have been transformed not only for cars but also for Uh, other categories the the context of time uh it has never happened before that in one day uh, your all india showrooms got shut it has never happened that in the next month half of the country is working and half of it is not working it has again never happened that print was not getting delivered but tv was getting delivered so and these things were happening uh, almost at the touch of a button so the context of planning with respect to time management completely turned on its head for marketers and this made a lot of our systems our tech uh, our platforms agile to handle situations like this so agility in time got transformed over the last uh, say 3 years what has happened in the last year is another context of surfaces 
Now the agility for a marketer to handle surfaces has completely changed in the last, say, uh, 36 months or 24 months. I mean, the Meta team tells us that you have to parallelly advertise on six plus surfaces on their platform to have some level of recognition or salience. Now, where was this five years back? Where was this 10 years back? Now, to deliver context on each surface requires your communication to be programmed vertically or horizontally, six second or 30 second, have a, have a big take CTA at the front or at the back. So the, the agility that a marketer requires on handling surfaces is also very, very different. And all of this ultimately also lands not only on engaging with the consumer, but lands on a very different context that we learned in the last three years is empathizing with the consumer. You know, sometimes you're not just selling or not just marketing. Uh, there is a dimension of empathy that came in uh, in 2020, in 2021, and as a brand who's, who's a high involvement brand, a big part of the household, you had to deliver empathy as part of your communication. And let me be very frank in saying that all these three parameters that I told you, the ROIs are evolving. So a lot of us love crunching numbers that, you know, what is the CTR, CPV, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of the stuff that I just said may not have an ROI that is definite and may be syndicated for a long time to come. So yeah, agility is, uh, I think, making still some of us sit on these seats. Uh, if, if not, then, you know, we would have been passe. So yeah, thank you, Nitin. Uh, I think great, uh, great thought, Rod. I think uh, for a category like yours, which went through a phase of 2021 and 2020, it, it surely required some form of agility. And I think you brought a very interesting point at a certain point of time, we didn't have to sell. We just had to empathize. And just that fact itself is a great example of how the brand was thinking about being agile at that particular point of time, not completely disowning its marketing uh, acumen or looking at things differently. I think phenomenal example, I think good for everyone to sort of recall or remember. Yannick, I move to you. I think very interesting category, fastest growing in India. We are a cricket loving nation. We love sports. What does agile marketing playbook mean for you or for your team when you guide them on increasing your scale, increasing your daily active users, monthly active users, and obviously a very different dynamic, right? We're always chasing the rut of what is the scale? What is the monthly active base? What is, and you know, we're always trying to chase that number versus the active user base, how do, you, how do you look at it and what do you recommend to your teams? Yeah, you know, I've had the, um, uh, the good fortune of having worked in sport for a long time and I think uh, there are kind of two examples that I always look at which are most recent to, to me which kind of also reverberate with what some of the panelists have been saying. Uh, so I work with a sports brand called the NBA which is a great global sports brand which again to a lot of what Vijay was talking about, it has a certain thing that they have to stand for a certain set of, certain playbook which is non-negotiable. And then over 10 years, they actually realized that the audience was changing, um, they had to get to younger audiences, they had to get to users or to consumers who were actually consuming pieces of games rather than, and they were extremely agile, even for such a large organization, and actually building, and now most of the audiences come from younger, from the younger demographics. So I think they've done an amazing job, and I was you know, glad to be a part of that with them. And the other extreme is, well, not the other extreme, but also in the sports, this thing's a product tech company, right to consumer company that, that I co-founded, Fancode. And the challenge that we have, and uh, I mean, agility is, it's, you know, someone talked about not having anything, not doing the same thing every two days or the same day. It's literally, you don't, you don't know, you know, you have to have agility almost literally every hour. Uh, because you have two challenges in brand. One is Fancode as a brand is very, very focused on sports fans, right? That we're very clear about, we build brand voice, and we keep evolving that, and we have to constantly be agile on. But the product, the core product that we have on our, on our platform has different sets of audiences. So the audience we're addra addressing to for golf, the PGA Masters, and the audience we're addressing to for Kabaddi, to the audience we're addressing to the Caribbean Premier League, to the Pakistan Super League, each of those audiences, the communication to them needs to be tailored. And that's a challenge because at some point of time we have 20 different live events going on on our platform at the same time with different audiences. So how you communicate, the language you use, uh, that is something that is an ex it's a, it's a large, it, br from a brand purpose it's a, it's a massive challenge. But even from a performance marketing perspective, how the, the you know, uh, Virat was talking about how you use different surfaces, how you're able to actually um, reach those audiences and keep modifying your communication. I think the amazing thing and the amazing advantage of being a tech company is that 
you accept the fact that nothing you do will be 100% right. You also accept the fact that everything you do will tell you how to do something else better. And I think that's where you know uh, the ability of to use meta to A/B test stuff, to be able to using different kinds of CTS colors, and to constantly be evolving. So I think from our perspective, it's almost um, I mean agility is not not like an option. It's like something that you know it's it's a, a it's question of survival. If we're not ag agile, and everything we do and how we market our product will essentially fail. I think very thoughtful. I think today we are moving as a country. I think India is one of the most dynamic countries. I mean, if you look at sports. Uh, you are a sports fan is the most generic probably question that somebody will tell you and that, that means that your marketing efforts cannot be the same for a Kabaddi fan versus a golf fan versus a cricket fan versus and so forth. So I think completely resonate and I'll quickly jump back to you Vijay. I think you know some of your recent campaigns like uh, Feel Life and Let a Break Free received multiple recognitions and obviously a tremendous consumer success which obviously comes at the back of great recognition. Can you throw some light on what made this campaign successful and some of the exceptional work that you guys are doing to create bespoke model for other categories or a particular category that you've been doing which is quite exciting right now? Sure. So I'll probably take one campaign and talk it in depth uh, because probably won't be able to do justice for the other. So uh, let's, uh, I'll talk about the Feel Life campaign which is something that we had uh, done on one of our uh, nerve care supplement uh, brand called Neurobion. So a lot of times agility comes from understanding a marketer's boss in depth. And don't get me wrong, a marketer's boss is consumer, no matter what marketer we are talking about. So understanding your consumer in depth is something that we had started this campaign with, right? So we have done a nerve health survey and alarmingly, you know, uh, the prevalence of B12 deficiency, which is the primary reason of, you know, nerve care symptoms or neuropathy symptoms, uh, is pretty high. And also, it was, uh, you know, startling to realize that 62% of uh, the Indian population don't even understand the difference between nerves and blood vessels. That basically means that they are, they tend to ignore, you know, the basic symptoms like tingling and numbness, which could be signs of nerve damage as something that's very trivial. So this is the data and research that had given us a product insight that you know, uh, people are not aware, they are ignoring symptoms. We need to uh, you know, uh, get this campaign out there which will enable people to understand and let them not ignore these symptoms. Then we went into a further consumer work or a consumer research with 30 consumers, getting them into one-on-one -on -one discussions to understand what does it mean from a life standpoint. I think one of us had talked about the being uh, empathy or empathizing with the consumer. So we went into what is that life insight that we can garner from these uh, consumers. And you know the basic symptoms like tingling and numbness will prevent you from enjoying the simple joys of life. It could be like you know somebody driving their car to you know on a long drive or playing uh, simple playing with your uh, kids. So these are the articulations that we had gotten from the consumer. So we uh, converted this into a um, mix of a product insight plus a life insight and that has what led to the Feel Life campaign. Now what has made this campaign uh, you know, a phenomenal success out in the market is because at the root of it, we had a very heartwarming insight that you, know, uh, you would want to get back uh, to enjoying the daily simple joys of your life uh, by relieving the tingling and numbness. Then second is uh, you know trying trying to get this campaign with a phenomenal KOL strategy. So we've uh, had some of the leading influencers like uh, Karina Kapoor Khan as well as uh, you know Milan Soman and among others, uh, and we got them to do something that's has become a viral uh, sensation recently called the Ice Bucket Challenge. So we've gave them a task of doing an ice bowl challenge. So you dip your hand in a bowl of ice and keep it there for 10 seconds or so. And then you start to do any basic work that you do with your hand. You will not be able to do because your hand will be feeling that numbness, right? So taking that something that's viral, again, uh, like an ice bucket challenge and using that to tell a story to make consumers realize the impact that a simple basic tingling and numbness could do is the other piece that had led to the uh, success. 
The third piece is simplifying and articulating this in a manner that the consumer can understand. Again, this came from the research and mining, right? We've asked consumers, what, what do you feel uh, when, you know, you know, tingling, how do you describe it? Right? They said, it's, it's almost like ants crawling up my legs or, uh, you know, uh, I am not able to feel my hand, right? So that is what has led us to simplifying the articulation even in our campaign. So we had uh, mirrored the current norm in the society by showing, uh, you know, uh, uh, working independent women in our campaign who is not able to, you know, uh, drive car to her office simply because of the tingling and numbness. And that has, again, uh, gathered huge reception from the audience. Overall, we stay true to our brand purpose. NeuroBeyond's brand purpose is ensuring that we bring back uh, you know, everybody, uh, the touch of life to everyone. So that is what uh, we state uh, true to our brand through the entire campaign and through this simplified articulation, powerful insight with a, you know, strong KOL strategy. That is what has led to this. And these things came from learning, being agile, learning what is working and what are consumers listening to, what are the latest insights. So that's where the agility came into play. Thanks, Vijay. I think we have limited time. I'll quickly jump to... Um Kavita, your products such as ProTalk Tire are specially designed for sports bike and have a very niche audience. How do you reach the right consumer, right channel? It's always very intriguing. What's your thought process? What's your strategy from awareness to action? Give us some insights and the audiences. How do you guys do it? Like, yeah. how do you find the guy who wants to buy the next tire? Obviously, you advertise, but how, do you, how does the research, like he had a very thoughtful um, tingling sensation to ice. Are you also guys doing something like that there? So ours is a very different category altogether. I mean, to take a step back, the tires category as a whole is extremely low involvement. I'm sure amongst all of us here, over 50% would not remember the brand of tire that is fitted in their car or bike. More so in the case of bikes, we believe. And, uh, you know, it being so low involvement, it's kind of challenging because you need to be in the consumer's consideration set at the right time. So we work a lot on the top of funnel and also because, you know, our brand uh, TVS Eurogrip is relatively new in the category. So when it comes to a product brand like ProTalk, it's actually one step easier than the master brand itself only because ProTalk is a, uh, like you said, it's a sport bike tire and it's more on performance and adrenaline. So the consumer there or the rider there is a little more discerning. He's researching online, sometimes purchasing online. In our category, e-commerce is very low. It's less than 0.5%. But a lot of research happens online. So what we do at different stages of the funnel is, uh, first of all, in the, at the top of the funnel, we get into strategic partnerships in the racing arena and in the adventure biking arena. For instance, we built our own endurance racing property. We've also been technical partners for the TVS One Make Championship for the last four years. Then middle of the funnel, it's more about, uh, like Vijay said, uh, you know, engaging with the right influencers. So in our case, it's auto journalists, reviewers, auto influencers as well, and uh, also the mechanic community. Engaging with them because the source credibility is high in that case and getting authentic, genuine reviews. When you know your product is good, you happily reach out for reviews, share it through social media, promote it. So that's pretty much what we do in the middle of the funnel. And uh, bottom of the funnel, it's very important for us to have a very dominant presence in the marketplace, um, in the digital market marketplace. And during COVID, one of the agile moves we did was uh, we started our own D2C e-commerce for two-wheeler tires along with doorstep delivery. While, you know, the numbers aren't massive, it's something we take pride in because uh, it's something none of the other brands are doing today. And, you know, we believe we are investing for the future there. So that's what we do with ProTalk. Perfect. Uh, thank you. And I'll move to uh, Rad. I think I heard D2C. I don't think uh, that's happening anytime soon, but you never know with Hyundai. I think uh, the dawn of new Hyundai and... Uh, a brand like your, yours, it's always active, it's always doing something exciting, whether it's with new technologies that you're exploring or launching your new cars in a certain way within the metaverse. Um, 
always something exciting. I even saw some of your 3D DOH uh, that you guys did, which was super successful. You guys are always at the helm of doing exciting things within the marketing book. How does that put pressure on your own playbook, right? I mean, because you're continuously striving for innovation and you're con continuously trying to do something exciting. Now, obviously, you are a brand that is recognized and it's never going to be delivered at home. I hope so. I, why not? But why say never? But um, how does it affect? Because the amount of investment that you guys do to create that kind of recall. Now, obviously, I'm talking about it, so hence, job well done. But how do you think about it? And what are the do's and don'ts for uh, operating uh, at such a high level of uh, you know, innovation category within your ecosystem? Nikhil, so uh, I like the statement you make. That Hyundai is a brand that continuously strives for more and more innovation. Uh, we'll settle it outside. Uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that. Yeah, so uh, I mean, we are in the car business. We are in the B2C business. We are uh, second biggest company in India for a while. Uh, just two stats to tell you why we have to innovate differently. Um, every year, our average buying age of our consumers, uh, we sell about 550,000 cars a year. Every year, the age is dropping. The average buying age of 550,000 customers is dropping. That means our consumer is actually becoming younger. And I'll give you an absolutely different corollary. The average ticket size or the average price at which we sell our cars has doubled in the last three, year, three, and three to four years. So the age is going younger. The average ticket size is becoming 2x. So we are getting more affluent consumers, more younger consumers into our buying, uh, into our kitty. Now, obviously, we know the car ecosystem uh, in India. It's been a bumper year last year. But yes, there are multiple brands from multiple manufacturers, from multiple organizations. So there is no other way to sustain than to deliver impact and then to deliver innovation. Now, as I said in, my, in the earlier uh, conversation, that we have to be in the surfaces where my consumer is. So if I have to target a 35-year-old or a 25-year-old, I'll have to... A, go to a streaming platform, or maybe B, go to an eSports arena. And we, have, we are now trying to fix the brands that we have, maybe from an Ionic 5 to a Creta, to a Venue, to maybe a i10, based on these cohorts, and trying to innovate in each one of them. Because if we don't innovate in each one of them, there are so many brands all of you are seeing today, you may not remember even one of us by the evening, if you are in market for that category, maybe you will. If you are out of the market for that category, you will definitely won't. So the task that we have from innovations like the 3D outdoor that we did last year for the launch of our venue is not only to make an impact from the features or the price to the in-market consumer, but also inform the passerby on CyberHub or the, or the impressions we serve to our audiences online on the differentiation we are doing at a brand level. So today maybe the consumer is not in the market, but tomorrow he will be, next year he will be. How will I try to attract him differentiate in a differentiated manner from the other 10 players that are in the market that are in the segment? Now based on that, there will be very different KPIs on top funnel and very different KPIs of bottom funnel. We try in headquarters to only focus a lot on brand building, doing top funnel work, and because of that, I'm able to sell much bigger segment cars from a brand like Hyundai in the past three years and have waiting on a lot of those cars and sell also cars that are more connected, more safer, you know, to have better driving and handling capabilities. So to do a lot of this, we did things like the 3D Outdoor. We've already done two big launches on Roblox. Uh, for a car category to do launches on Roblox was also unheard on. And I'm using the word Roblox and I'm not using the word Metaverse because Metaverse is used very casually nowadays. But we actually launched uh, where there are 9 million people in India. So we actually launched on Roblox. Uh, we, we, are, we did the motor show. We did the Delhi motor show in January. A lot of the brands participated. But we had no domestic cars on display. We only had robotics. We only had future mobility. We only had smart cities. Because these are opportunities to build differentiated brand space in the consumer's mind of tomorrow and also of today. So if we believe in this super hyper concentrated media space, not only cars, but all categories are advertising together, if you don't innovate, 
uh, you're just going downhill. There is no other option. So, yeah. Great to hear that, Virat. I think with the kind of great top funnel marketing you guys do, I think on your site you can have next to the book a test drive, deliver the car button. You never know, man, you know. People might just not need that kind of uh, influence anymore with your kind of marketing. Anuj, what are your thoughts? I think you summed it up really well. I think I'm not going to deep dive into the question of agile marketing because just your thought process shows how you're transforming and you're thinking ahead and thinking for uh, the, the problems that globally we're facing in terms of uh, uh, many, many uh, factors. You've just launched a very interesting uh, first cooler in its category called the BLDC technology. You would like to share a little bit more about us, what was the thought behind it and why is it there? Yeah, so see, Symphony always has been associated with innovation, right? with a f too many firsts that we have. Internationally, we have done cooling for stadium in Mexico. A lot of people don't know that. And the inspiration behind launching and it's world's first, not just India, world's first range of BLDC enabled coolers. What does it do for a consumer? It saves your electricity bill by 60% versus our own existing product of similar specs. So that's the kind of impact that you can bring to the consumer. And that's a thing that we're always striving for, that how we can bring more value to the consumer by innovating and by staying true to the whole philosophy of thinking of tomorrow. And that's what we're working across. So many more innovations are in the pipeline. And completely agree with Virat on the point of innovation. If you don't innovate, you will die. And one of the part about agility during COVID for everybody was, you don't know how much is your marketing budget going to be. The moment I see a new headline about COVID, I say, kitna budget katne wala. <laughs> we don't know that something all marketers have seen through different rounds of COVID, everybody will agree to it. So which means agility is even more important. You need to be more sure of the choices you're going to make. They are good to have medium, they must to have mediums. But what is important is always to keep some percentage of budget for innovation so that you know what new you can do for future. I think that is important. And again, going back to the basics, drive product innovation, marketing and our communication only do to a certain extent. Beyond that, a product has to sell. Product has to be the hero. You need to invest in that. Thanks, Anuj. I think organizers, I hope you're listening. 60% electricity, give a recommendation to Taj. It's a good one to have. Um, save the world, world peace. But I think quickly, um, Yannick, um, you guys have collaborated with, uh, I know I'm running short on time, we have two minutes and I have, I have another question, but you guys have collaborated with Google and obviously you're building Google Cloud and obviously you're building a very interesting data-driven approach. Would like to share some thoughts on that, um, on how, how you guys went about it and what's the thought behind it and the longevity of that. Uh, I think the principle is, is exactly the same problem I spoke about earlier, right? We are trying, we have all this uh, different cohorts of sports fans, and our goal is as soon as they get onto our platform, how do you get them to the content that they want as fast as possible, and then how do you make sure that we are able to engage them with content which is relevant to them? So obviously a lot of the stuff that we've done with cloud services like Google Cloud is to be able to understand that consumer better till we start building audiences, an audience profile around them. So uh, we've you know, as a, as a sports fan platform for us, being able to understand the fan, being able to use third-party data to be able to start understanding them and then start creating their own profiles within fan code is something which is of utmost importance for us. Uh, authentication is, is one layer, but because we're a direct-to-consumer product and, you know, we charge consumers for content, uh, and obviously we also target third-party advertising onto them, it's really important for us to actually build those profiles very very strongly around them. And that's something that the partnership with Google has allowed us to do, both for new customers to come onto our platform as well as for existing customers. How do we build more value, build better experiences for them? Super, Ben. That gets me to obviously the Q. And uh, I think you guys have been a pioneer when it comes to mobile solutions. Um, I saw some interesting th stuff on board. I saw some interesting thing that you guys done for Parker when you obviously work with a plethora of brands. What are you guys thinking when it comes to the agile marketing playbook which you want to create for the partners, agencies, brands that you work with? Um, anything exciting that you guys are brewing that people should know about? Okay, great. So basically what we are trying to do here is that, um, uh, to simply put from a marketer perspective, today they go to platforms like a Google, Facebook, or, or certain platforms, and they choose the native filters when they are looking to really select audience segments out there. So that's one way in which 
uh, traditionally marketers or any ad tech company you know has really been offering solutions on targeting okay what we're trying to do out here is that we are basically decoupling customer intelligence from publisher platforms so what we're basically doing is put out a customer intelligence cloud which is sitting outside and it it conceptually imagine that that it is sitting adjacent to your cdp so if you have first party data or you don't have first party data but you need access to some customer intelligence at scale so so you get a lot of customer intelligence from our platform and then using that platform you are able to do inciting and you are able to orchestrate your 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 campaigns or let's say that you are able to orchestrate all this intelligence be it into growth channels so you could take it into a facebook you could take it into a youtube you could take it into a dv360 or potentially you could plug that into retention marketing channels so if you want to make your whatsapp marketing smarter and so on and so forth whether you want to make your email marketing smarter so largely our endeavor is really to democratize customer intelligence and take that out uh, in a way uh, that marketers can in a very agile way do planning choose it and really lay you know use that across any digital marketing channel perfect i think a time is up so i'm going to skip one question that we had on connected tv uh, but i think i'm going to wrap this uh, wonderful panel with something uh, which i call the rapid fire round uh, which i obviously did tell you about because it defeats the whole purpose of me being the moderator otherwise so the purpose is as the man himself does it i'm not going to do it as well as him and i don't know if e4m has a hamper that is as, as fancy as karan johar's but uh, i'm going to ask you a question and hopefully you can answer in short time i don't want to put you on a spot but that's pretty much what it is so i'll start with you yanik um, i hope you are watching the ipl this time i just wanted to know whether you're watching the ipl this time on jio connected tv or star sports I, I I mean I'm I'm digitally native, right? And I I think TV has got its its place absolutely. But I haven't had a cable connection for four years now. So, so it's Geo mm -hmm. is where you're watching. So if wherever it's available on digital. Super man, good answer. I hope everybody is listening, uh, and the other people too. Um, Virat, um, again, not putting you in a spot. We have been looking at the new Varna, and everybody is just going mad about it. If you had to. connect that personality the ferocious new varna with the personality of a cricketer within the ipl who would it be uh, hardik pandya i hope his manager is listening i don't know if that's an offer but you never know um okay vijay um which team do you most associate with as a brand with an ipl and you could say none also yeah i mean obviously can't take one or the other but um, i think as a sports and energetic you know we play the role of supplements so we are there to provide energy for all brands all the, all the teams so. very png answer very nice okay um kavita favorite team outside chennai super kings for tvs um very tough one <laughs> i think i'll go with whoever gives us the highest and best performances this season no wonder you both are sitting next to each other right <laughs> yeah i think you should have changed your seats okay uh, another diplomatic answer uh, no points in the rapid fire um okay anuj i'm going to ask you a really weird question because that's what's what is the craziest place that you've seen someone use a symphony air cooler <laughs> So you do market visits and consumer visits. Yeah, sometimes you get to see things you don't want to see. <laughs> yeah, so it's ec ec so. Let me put it this way: in every room in the house, super. There is this mini cooler. I think you. I think uh, okay. That's every room in the house is not crazy, but I feel it's a good thing because we are all saving sixty percent multiplied by four rooms, which is great. Um, every place which has got a door, so just not the room. So okay. Let. <laughs> Yeah, I think people got the hint, and now they get the right answer. Okay, last question for you, Deepak. Um, I think TikTok versus Instagram. Who do you think is winning the battle globally? Wow. Yeah. Uh, globally, you mean to say? Yeah. India, they got banned, so they lost that battle. <laughs> Somebody had a hand to play in that. So. I, I, that's a tough one, you know. But um, but I probably feel that I think both have their own place. Wow. Please go over there. Okay guys, that's all from us and thank you for this panel. Uh, thank you guys.